And I guess you'd say I, I grew up on the in the knitting store on the streets of Brooklyn because we played outside. The building had a, had a, uh, a stoop with three stairs. And I remember bouncing a ball there and catching the ball. Oh, and I have one terrible story about that. We lived on 14th Street. Well, the boys on 14th Street decided they're going to have a fight with the boys on 15th Street. And the fight consisted of making these wooden guns in which you put pieces of cardboard and a rubber, a rubber around it and you would let it go and it would hit the other thing. It was very much a fight comparison to what people do now. And they got all the girls to cut out the cardboard things. So we spent one day cutting out cardboard slots. And we, they go down to the, where the two streets came together. And the other boys don't show up. So they, they, they shot all the cardboard things at the girls. I was unbelievably protected because I was the only child. I, I don't know if I knew it then, but what you remember from later on is their whole joy in life is you. So you feel very responsible about anything you do. I was not allowed to go on the subway until I was about 12. And then I could go, I was allowed to go two stops to County Island because a friend who had lived near me moved and was having a party. And when I got there, I had to call up. And I had to call up every half hour before I came home. I didn't know till much later is when I was in junior high, I belonged to this girls' club that met on Friday nights called the Aranda Girls, because each letter in the name was from the name of one of us. Not that it was the first initial, it was just some, <laughs> we did nothing. I had no idea, we just met. I still, I think I still have uh, some of the minutes I was secretary of the club. But I didn't find out till later that my father had walked after me every time I went to the club and waited until it was through and walk back behind me. So I was a little protected. Every time I heard that other people could do things, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> My friend Lucia lived in a private house and she had an attic. And in the attic, there were all the old clothes. So we used to spend hours getting dressed and making up stories. But the whole problem was the minute the story was started was it's time to go home. <laughs> So you never got to the story. <laughs> the next house was, was another apartment house. Uh, there was this family that had moved in from England, and the woman had never seen a dumbwaiter before. They had this, like, it was, it was like a moving box that you put your garbage in and they would put it down. And she, when she opened the door in the kitchen, she saw, thought it was another closet. So she washed it <laughs> and papered it and put it all her. Well, her dishes and they disappeared. <laughs> they found it back again, but it was a, she didn't know what it was. At the very end of the street, there was a lot with a, a large, black, you know, plain area with no grass or anything on it, where they stored these large black pipes that they used for sewers, I guess, or water for underneath. And, and Lucille was the adventurous one. One day we walked down there, I don't know, my, my mother didn't know where I was going, and we started playing in the pipes, and it was so much fun. I mean, you crawl through them and go over them and go around through them. We turned solid black <laughs> from playing there. Meanwhile, my mother and father didn't know where I was, so they went to the police station. They were getting hysterical, and the policeman says, oh, we had a kid kidnapped from here a few weeks ago. <laughs> Well, finally, they started walking toward the lot. Lucille and I come up from the other side. We decided to come home. It was the only time in my whole life that my mother hit me. She was so scared, she thought I was dead. I guess you do that under great pressure. She never, or my father, they never hit me. That was the only time. At another time, this is what I can't believe I did. Uh, it was a three-story apartment house, not very large, with a roof. And you could go up there to see the fireworks. We could see the fireworks from Coney Island. It wasn't only Fourth of July, it was every Sunday or every Friday, I don't know. And I don't know how Lucille got this into her head, but she decided she wanted to walk around the rim of the roof. So I go after her, <laughs> walking around the rim of the roof. And my mother and someone else were sitting across the street and they look up and they see me walking. <laughs> I, I, I don't, they didn't 
didn't say anything, but I thought they, they would almost die from that one. <laughs> uh, there was a, a playground park about two blocks away. And I don't know, I guess once a year, twice a year, they would have a, a costume part, a costume thing. And I had, a, we both dressed up for it. And I had the pictures of, of us dressed up. And she looks adorable. She was very cute. Really. I don't look so good. There you can see how kinky my hair was at that time. You lived in an apartment building yeah. on this street. And the, where was the store? Downstairs. And the corner uh, was Avenue U, which was a large, uh, relatively large avenue. And I remember about three stores from the other side of the street was a candy store. Uh, and we did not have a telephone. So if you had to make a phone call, you went to the candy store or the candy store, they would call you if you got a phone. I, I really think they did, or maybe, I, I think I remember that. They were not, people didn't call each other that much. Or we didn't have a telephone, who had the money for it? My father would get a, uh, he would buy a, the Yiddish language newspaper, the Daily Forward, every day there, I think. We would walk to Sheepshead Bay to buy fresh fish, because the fish there was very good. She walked miles to buy anything because there was no money.